So I needed the Elgato Camlink USB capture card, the little one. And man, right now the prices are super high. Everyone's gouging the prices. It's insane. So I came across this little device on Amazon. For only $30. And man, I could not let the opportunity go. It's tiny, I tell you that much. But it works. So if you are wondering, does it really work? I gotta tell you, it does work. But you have to have in mind that it only records 4K, 30 FPS, 4K, I mean 1920 or 1080p, 30 FPS. It can also record 1440p. So it's a USB 2.0. Now, what is the reason why I needed it? Let me explain to you right quick. I wanted to connect my DSLR camera. This is a Canon 80D. So doing some changes, I made it work. There's a couple of videos out there with help to turn your SLR or DSLR camera into a webcam device, like a webcam. And this is what you want to use. Now, to answer your question, does it work for the average user, for the not so much tech savvy? It's a plug and play. Yes, it is plug and play. You plug it in here via HDMI, and then it goes into your computer. Simple as that. Now you have to have in mind that not all DSLRs have clean HDMI output. What does that mean? Well, the HDMI output, it's nothing on the screen like you're looking at right now. As a matter of fact, that is my Sony A5100. I bought this camera for live streaming and because it's compact and everything. I also got the Canon M200 in the mail right now. So I'm going to be doing a review of that one. So guys, turning your DSLR for better quality, for better look, you can easily and you can trust this little device right here. It works. Okay, so right now you're looking at my settings. To have a clean HDMI, you go over to this little toolbox looking thing. You click on it. You go to HDMI settings, info display, click off, and there it is. See, once again, I'm going to click it on and it goes back to that. And after that, well, you're going to have um, all those, uh, all that stuff on your uh, screen that you really, really don't want. So um, go ahead and go to your uh, setup. Once again, HDMI settings, display and off. And that way you have clean HDMI. Another quick setting that I do to have my A5100 running is I go into camera settings and I go into uh, file format. I keep mine. A lot of people recommend here, but you might have an SD card that doesn't work. So I just click this one. It's still good enough quality. Uh, recorded settings, it's where I change it to 60p, which this one is 1080p, 60 frames. That's what I record at. But for live streaming, this doesn't really matter. Just leave it on 60p. And if you have a capture card that records 60 FPS, then you'll have that option. Another one that I change is the focus mode. I have it on continuous AF and I just have this setting. I have mine on fast and track duration normal. And this one, I leave it alone, which is the way it is. Now, this right here depends on how you like your exposure comp composition and whatnot. Now, these are the settings that I keep it at. Right here, your white balance is where you uh, change the color of your camera and what you like. It depends. So, this right here, you can, uh, you can mess with it yourself. See, you can move the white balance according to your home, uh, to your room lighting, and how you want your uh, image quality to be. What other setting do I do? Um, I really, I just leave everything else alone. I don't mess around with it. Then I go right back to HDMI settings, HDMI resolution. You can have it at 1080p, so it exports at 1080p. 
okay and then on HDMI display we click that off so we have clean HDMI and the out of focus it's beautiful but like I said it only goes to 30 FPS and not higher than that so for gaming would I recommend this for gaming probably not because you are capped at 30 fps and there's also no pass through this is just a straightforward so if you wanted to let's say capture your gameplays at 30 fps and you don't mind that because elgato cam link is like almost 200 dollars everywhere i look it's insane my man and guys right now i am using the sony a5100 uh, to record this video i usually use my canon 80d I upgraded from this uh, Nikon D5300, but this one has perfect, perfect out of focus. I love it. But let's say you only have a Canon 80D or you have a DSLR camera that you can have clean HDMI. Make sure you have clean HDMI before you buy a camera. Like I said, the Canon 80D has one. Uh, the Sony, the 6000 series and whatnot, they all have it. But guys, I have to say one thing. I really, really love the video quality of the Sony A5100. I just love it. Now, there's one thing that you also need to buy. And it's called a power adapter. Uh, 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 battery dummy, I think is what it's called. This is like a fake battery, but it's connected to a power brick. And then it goes into the wall. So you have unlimited power to just go insane without limits. Do I recommend going this route? And what is the difference between this and let's say one of the Logitech C920? I got the C920, I got the C910, I got the C922 is over there in another box. I got a whole bunch of different little uh, uh, USB webcams. So what is the difference? Well. The quality is always going to be better coming from an HD. I mean, from, yeah, from HD, like a freaking Canon 80D, 1080p, 60 FPS. Uh, the color, the sharpness is just going to be more beautiful. It's going to bring a lot more quality to your live stream, to your video. Now, is it worth it? The answer is yes, it is worth it. But if you don't have the money, don't, just don't do it. Because you will be just fine with the C920 or C922 or any USB webcam now if you have the money to do it by all means go ahead and do it you know what i mean invest in your live stream if that's something that you really want to do so guys thanks for watching this video it's a worth it yes it is is it necessary i don't know you answered that question to yourself
I'll see you guys in the next video.